I failed to introduce myself. My, I'm Elder James Miller. I used to uh, tease Jason all the time. I said, you know, we got family connections. You know, May is my sister-in-law. <laughs> Jennifer and uh, Travis are my niece and nephews. And Viola was my auntie. Y'all recognize that name in the family? It's a state on New York. That was my aunt. So you never know who you tied into or who you some kin to. At this time, anybody else? Yeah. God bless you. Um, I just talked with the daughter. I'm Janine Clark, and um, I lived on Power Street. And that's where Olivia Parnell lived. Her and her family. I remember her brother. I think they were the first ones to get a Martha Jean Queen. You know, she was given her homes. And then they moved. But like was already said, um, Olivia was a quiet spirit. A humble person, and um, I send my love to the family, and she's gonna be missed. Hello, everyone. To bless you. Uh, oh boy. I just want to say a few words. First, give an honor to God who is the head of my life. Mm -hmm. And to the family. I just want to say that Olivia was somebody special. To my cousin George, the late George Johnson Senior. And George, he and I, uh, we had a great bond, but Olivia just so sweet when I go over there. I just didn't I just I said I want to marry somebody like her. That's how I felt. Because she was just always treating me nice. And what I like about her, she stayed in the church. You know, she was, she was one church going person. So I know she lo loved the Lord and she taught her kids mm -hmm. and they, they put so much into them that, you know, I see it in them every time I see them. They, they, they got George and Olivia in them. And so I just, just want to say that God is good. And all you got to do is just keep praying because it'll get you through this. You know, I can't say how you feel or how y'all feel, but I know that it's an empty there, emptiness there. Mm -hmm. So we, we just got to pray for one another and just get through this because she she, she was a strong person. And I just want to say she stood her ground, too. She didn't play. She was serious most of the time, every time I met her and talked with her. And, uh, you know, I was over there a lot more than I wanted to be because the husband, George, we want to build an air car. And I was over there when they were fixing Brussels in the morning because of this. But you see, he got close. We ain't got an air car, but we got an electric car. So, you know, his, his dream is coming to reality was that. And I just want to say that Olivia, she's going to be missing out anything I could do for the family. Uh, we're going to be talking, and, and we just, all of us just yeah, kind of pray and, and try to live the life that she lived. Because she lived a good life. And she put a lot into her kids and her husband. So, I just, I'm going to miss her already. Thank God. It's okay over here. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I do, we want to give words together, all of us, all three of us. So, Sister Johnson, she kind of, I say she raises a little bit, but she put so much into us. Mm -hmm. So much, spiritually, naturally. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> but um, she, when I was going through, I remember talking to her. And she will always say to me, oh, you're going to be all right, Tawana. You're going to be okay. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then she would send me resources. We would sit outside a uh, store parking lot talking for a very long time, just laughing. She was just so great. And when I look at her children, they're all intelligent, so Amen. smart. I mean, they're just excellent. Um, the stuff that the education that she put on the inside of her children is shows 
the grandchildren, the entire family, she just lived a great life. She was just always so positive. I remember in Sunday school class, that's where she taught, right? In Sunday school class, she would make visuals. Thank God, because I'm a visual. But she would make visuals of the Bible, and that's how we would learn. And we'll crack, you know, we had some people that were kind of characters in the class, and we'll crack some jokes, and we'll laugh. She'd be like, okay, you know, let's get back on topic. That's not what I'm saying. But she was just awesome. She is amazing. She will be missed. Last year, I remember having a conversation with her, and I was telling her, I said, Miss Johnson, I got, I just honor you. I respect you. All the things you've done for us. Oh, my goodness. I, I really feel like in life I made it because some of the things that you installed in the inside of us. And she was like, now, Tawana, you had other teachers. <laughs> it wasn't just me. And I, said, I know, but this is my time to offer you. And little did I know, I did not know that she was even sick, or I didn't know that this, you know, her her time would be this year. I did not know that. And I just took my children over to see her, and we were over there, and I came in, sat down, watched some TV, and we'll play some games sometime. And I remember her daughter, uh, my girl Jocelyn, was like, "Look at all that gray hair!" I said, "You got some gels," and she said, "Well, you got some too, Jocelyn." She said. She's just so funny and just so full of life. And I just really appreciate the time that God has allowed her to be here on this earth and to allow us to be able to spend time with her. And she poured into Will and to Crystal. And um, I just want to say thank you for sharing your mom with us. She's just awesome, amazing person. I, uh, I wanted to say my name is Crystal Harris, and I wanted to uh, speak um, regarding Sister Olivia Johnson. Um, I just I got to know Sister Olivia Johnson joining Pentecostal Temple Church of God in Christ when I was um, what was this time? I was three. Yeah, I was three years old. I was three years old, but um, later on, when she became my Sunday school teacher, um, I just think Sunday school is a vital part of the ministry. Uh, very important that we have Sunday school. I remember um, as growing up, I started off in uh, Mother Baker's class. Mother Baker would always talk about heaven. She would always talk about heaven, and I grew up wanting to go to heaven, wanting to see heaven. And um, then from there, going to Sister Olivia Johnson, and, and as my sister uh, uh, Tawana Fredenberg said, <laughs> she was she was a very visual person, a very creative person. She had a way of making the lessons come alive, and um, and I really appreciated that about her. Her being my Sunday school teacher, and then from there teaching purity class. Purity class in our church is a class that teaches the young people, the teens, how to live a pure life, how to live a holy life. And so um, I really appreciated her way of teaching, and just and just as Tawana was saying, just how serious she was, and she was passionate about education. That education and that. Um, spirituality, that relationship with God is something that is evident in her children. Um, growing up at, at Pentecostal Temple, that's where um, I became very good friends with Jocelyn Johnson. Jocelyn Johnson with her, <laughs> with her sense of humor. And sometimes we get in trouble because we sit there and we just be cracking up at different things that we <laughs> that would go on in the church. But that's why church is so important because we would have we would build relationships um, there in the church. And I just appreciated Sister Johnson and just the way that she instilled education um, and also making sure that her children had a relationship with God. You know, you see that, of course, with uh, uh, Reverend Jason, Jason Johnson. You see that with him. And you see, I thank God for Sister Camelia because Sister Camelia even allowed me to come spend some time with her at Eastern Michigan University. Um, we, we spent some time right there together. She allowed me, she kind of showed some things around and uh, showed me around in some things. And then I remember I was struggling in high school. Let me tell you, math is not my area. Let me take this off because uh, they're falling off my face. So math is, <laughs> math is not my area. Okay. So I remember I was getting ready to fail that math class in senior high school. I was getting ready to fail it. So I called George Johnson. Yes. George Johnson came over to the house, 
and he tutored me, and I passed my math class, praise the Lord. He was my tutor, too. And I just thank God for what she instilled um, in all of her children. I thank God for just her legacy, her life. I thank God for what she instilled in me. I thank God for her creativity. And um, I love the, the uh, Johnson family. And I just wanted to say, just have words, just to share how much I love you. I do want to say, George Johnson was my math tutor in high school and in college. And I would not have made it without him. He followed me all the way through life. He's like, you're going to get this. I'm like, but I don't understand. <laughs> uh, real brief, uh, my name is William Morris. Um, I've been a part of the Johnson family almost just about my whole life. Um, along with Miss Olivia and her husband, George, um, I just appreciate everything about them. Their heart and their will for education to instill on other people was definitely amazing. Um, a lot I can say, um, I'm fortunate that my family or whatever, me and my older sister was able to be a part of their legacy and their life, you know, almost forever. So um, just praying for the family today. Thank you. God bless you. We've still got a few more minutes for those who just came in. God bless for those who just came in. You know, it really blessed me to watch these because we all came from the same church and I watched them. Everybody's gone in their various different ways and they've grown up. You know, and I thought about you can be an inverted person and yet still make a great effect on somebody's life. Isn't that powerful how she's quiet, but yet she made such a great effect on others' lives. And I and I know it. I observed it. I watched it. I've seen it. Um, I said I, I got to make sure I get here in time enough because I know there probably won't be no place to park out there. <laughs> but we thank God for her life and her legacy. Thank God for her sons and her daughter. How the Lord has just really truly blessed them. And how the Lord allowed her to see her work and labor of love that she performed before her children. You know, it's very important for us to live the life before others, that they would, that we would be that example, and they would follow behind our example. God bless you. Come on, brother. I'm grateful to be here. My name is Al Chisholm III. I'm the first cousin of Olivia. And, uh, Death is no stranger to our family. But um, I talked to Olivia a few days before she um, transitioned. We had a discussion, and her words were, uh, it is what it is. She said, if God heals me, I'm good with that. If God takes me, I'm good with that. It gave me another perspective on life to be good with that. You know, I know where she is, I know where she comes from because her family. She's from a praying family. Her mother, Aunt Marie, was my dad's younger sister. And uh, it was quite a large family, so they produced quite a few siblings. So, you know, on behalf of the family, we know we feel your pain, but we also know that there's another day coming. He promised us, you know, that we should see our sleeping loved ones again. It's just sleep. And you know, we have a lot of people discussing about the way that she did what she did. You know, Olivia was a planner. She planned this. Yeah. She did. So, you know, um, God knows our DNA. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how you go in the ground and ashes to ash. That's where we came from. He knows your DNA. He's going to put you back together. There will be no more pain. There will be no more suffering, no more tears, no more funerals. And we, uh, we're, we're, we're living for that moment. So, family, we share, we know, we share, but we know also that there's a brighter day. We know that we're going to get, you never get over it, but you get, you get by. You get by. So God is going to continue to provide for us as we continue to move forward with the plans that we are going to do. And children, family reunions, they were important. Family is important. So it's important first thing my uncles used to tell me when we got together at reunions and when you be looking at these pretty girls that come that's your cousin boy <laughs> they put you in line 
So if you don't know where you came from, if you don't know who's around you, who's your family, you never know. So it's good to have those kind of units. So as we press through and as we get by, we're going to lean on each other. We're going to stay prayed up because that's what we do. More prayer, more power. The Bible says pray without ceasing. That means that you pray. He says lean not into your own understanding, but in all things acknowledge him. He said, I, he didn't say I might direct your path. He said I will. I will. So we're going to lean on that word because we know the word is the word. So we thank you for I thank you for the time. And if we continue to pray for each other, we will be strong. Thank you. God bless you. Appreciate all your words and words of encouragement um, to the family. God bless you. At this time, we believe we've been ready to go into that service at this time. God bless you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Katina Brown Johnson, and uh, we moved up here from Alabama, and I went to Carver Elementary, and Camilla was in my class, and I, that's how I met Jonathan and George and Jocelyn. But what I wanted to say about this family is usually when you have a lot of children, they're all different. They all are different. But this family, all four kids were smart. Every single last one of them. And they had a program, and it was stuck to. They made sure those kids stayed under that program, that leadership, under church, knowing the word, and following the word. So I just, it's just been a, I've been knowing Camille since I was in the third grade. I kind of, I know George a different way. He don't like me telling the story. So I'm not going to tell it today what he used to do to me as a child. And I had to run from him. I'm just going to leave that out. But I'm, I'm here to read the resolution for Sister Olivia Johnson. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you with the right hand of righteousness. Isaiah 41 and 10. Whereas... Sister Olivia Marie Johnson was a supportive and loving worshiper at the St. John Missionary Baptist Church, whereas Sister Johnson would bring her family to church to fellowship with the saints of God, whereas Sister Johnson was a supporter of our vacation Bible school where she would have many activities for the children and adults. She loved to work with her hands and she was very creative. Her mild and pleasant manner will be missed. Therefore, it is with great sadness that we bid farewell to our dear sister, a blessed woman of God. For we know to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Humbly submitted, May 5th, 2022, from the St. John M.B. Church family, Reverend Wallace Johnson, pastor. From the Everlasting Light Church of God in Christ, to Camelia, George Jr., Jason, and Jocelyn Johnson, Pastor Otha B. Harris Jr., and the entire congregation at an everlasting light church of God in Christ would like to express our most heartfelt condolences in the passing of your dear mother, Sister Olivia Marie Johnson. Expressions of empathy sometimes fail to adequately communicate the sentiments of the heart. But the word of God is rich and thorough, reaching what the human touch cannot. God is our refugee, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, do the earth be removed, and through the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, through the waters thereof roar and be troubled, through the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Salah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refugee. Salah, Psalms 46, 1 through 7, 
King James Version. We stand ready to serve. Humbly submitted, Elder Otha B. Harris, Jr., Pastor, an, everlet- an everlasting light church of God in Christ. To our beloved Johnson family, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. We are so deeply saddened by the loss of your mother, Olivia Johnson. We are all sharing your loss with you in our own way with God. Our grief is pale in comparison to the pain we know you are feeling at this time. But we had to let you know that you are not alone. For now, it will have to remain the painful mystery that it is. Losses like this can challenge our faith. However, this is precisely the time when our faith needs to be its strongest. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Weeping may do endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. It may not be tomorrow morning or next week or even next month, but we have this promise that one day you will wake up and feel comforted by God's eternal hand, by his spirit, by fellowship with Jesus Christ. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Pastor John, Pastor John and First Lady Hannah Coffee Kingdom Leg- Legacy Kojic and Allen Park, Michigan. I just have a couple of more. By Faith Ministries, Sister Olivia M. Johnson, to Reverend Jason Johnson, Sister Brandell Johnson, and the entire family of Sister Olivia M. Johnson. Praise the Lord. When we heard about the passing of your precious mother, We had to respond, if only in this small way. You must know that because of her passing, our hearts too are broken, but not as those who have no hope. While words cannot express the grief that we share with you, nor the love we offer you, we did want these few lines to express to you our support as you go through these difficult days. Therefore, on behalf of myself, my wife and the entire Faith Ministries Church family, I would like to express the heartfelt sympathy we share with you. As you pass through this valley of the shadow of death, remember God is with you. It is during such times as these that we draw upon our faith, stand upon our scriptures, and rely upon our God. There is no question that in this and through this, God will keep you, comfort you, and sustain you. You and your family are forever in our prayers. Yours in Christ, Dr. C. Dexter Wise III, Dr. Shirley D. Wise, and the entire Faith Ministries Church family. Resolution for Olivia, Olivia M. Johnson, whereas we realize that one by one, the role is being called. One by one, God is picking his bouquet. This should remind us that we too must give an account to God for our stewardship. Therefore, we wish to recommend for your comfort, Revelations 21, 1 and 4. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. John 14 and 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Be a resolved that a copy of this resolution to be placed in the home of the Johnson family by order of New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church on the sixth day of May, 2022, Thomas Willis, pastor. Thank you. Thank you.
Gethsemane, Pastor Gethsemane, is in the Baptist Church of Westland. Amen. Thank you for being obedient. And at this time, we have remarks also and the reading of the Old Testament scripture from Evangelist Crystal Harms, Kurt Harris. Different than what it is now. 
And she said, the joys of not tell you that I've made their clothes? <laughs> I said, no. She said, and sometimes when I didn't make it, I would go and grasp a, grab a garment that was used mm -hmm. and worn, and I would make it new again. I'm not making this story up just because of the case. This is the truth. Mm -hmm. And so she had a box full of buttons. <laughs> I'm telling the truth. And she would take these buttons and she would place these buttons on a suit jacket or she would buy a nice shirt and she would place a, a button on the, on the shirt. She did this for her husband. She did this for all her children. And when they told me that she had passed, I thought about that. And I said, isn't that just like God? To have someone as creative as her to uh, be in the situation to show her children the way. And I said, you know what, God, that is what you just did for her. Right? You took the corruptible. I'm going to sit down, right? But you took something that was corrupted. Mm -hmm. And now she has been changed to incorruptible. Mm -hmm. You took her intelligence and in a head that only uh, wore a hat from time to time and you took the hat and you saved it for a crown. Right? Yeah. You took concrete streets on, right, and you exchanged it and embellished it yeah. Yeah. so now she can walk on streets mm -hmm. and go. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Pearls that could be real or not are now an entryway <laughs> into the heavenly yes, the heavens. But yes, I love yes. the family. I loved her. She was an amazing woman. Yes. Well, I'll say, we can say she is mm -hmm. an amazing woman right. because, because she's still here. She's still alive. We don't, we don't die. But I'm going to read the New Testament scripture, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, Concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall ever, so shall we ever be with the Lord. We thank God for his word, and I would just uh, suggest that this is a time of celebration. So open up your mouth, clap your hands, right, and give God some praise because he I mean, just, just a second. I'm not trying to get out of place, right? Is this okay? Could you all please just raise your hand? I mean, I, I, I get into trouble with the church board. But this is an opportunity. This is what she would want, right? Yes, we're going to cry. Yes, we're going to be sad. But could you just say hallelujah, even if you don't know what it is? Come on, could you just say hallelujah? Come on, could you just give God the praise? Come on, just clap your hands. And say, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Come on, Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for those words, Pastor. At this time, we'll have songs, worship of songs by Nathaniel Johnson, Amazing Grace.
have a song. Thank you, Nathan, for that. Thank you, we needed that. Amen. Amen. Song by Evangelist Hannah Coffey. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The baby almost took me out. <laughs> Woo! Amazing grace. Hallelujah. We love the Johnson family. And I thank God for my Sunday school teacher, a faithful mother in my community that protected us and watched out for us, that taught us right from wrong and encouraged us to love the Lord. We grew up and had a phenomenal rearing in the city of Inkster. And she was one of the pillars of our community that we looked to as an example of an exemplary mother and teacher. And it's to God be the glory. And so my dear brother took me way back to Andre Crouch. And I love him so much that I honor you all in song. Let's worship him. How can I say thanks for all you've done for me? Things so undeserved you proved your love. of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be I Yeah! 
can be forgiven any kind of praise. Let it go to praise. Day. Yeah. My God, her hope 
was the lesson that for her faith in God. She was a strong woman. She endured and she endured to the end. Amen. She loved her children. Yes. She loved them with all that was within her. Mm-hmm. Oh, Joy, she gonna be at that celebration of your celebration. Right, right, right. Cause she gonna be in your heart. And she always gonna be with you. Camille, when she was telling me at Easter time, but she was making that Easter card for you. My God. You know that she loved you. Sometimes we don't always see it, but she loved you with her unconditional love. Oh, she loved her family. Jason, she was proud of when I tell you, when I was asking her, could I come by and do something for you? She said, Jason is coming. Mm-hmm. But she knew that she, she knew that she had her children that had her back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I had her back. Yeah. She wouldn't always receive it, but I think, what can mm-hmm. I do for you and Jocelyn? She said, we okay. Mm-hmm. I told her each of the time, I said, I had a cook prepared dinner. I would have brought you a meal. She said, we, we not, we're not eating much. She said, we can't, not, we can't eat it. But she talked about the Good Friday service. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to, she heard the message. And I called out that guy back home. I said, did you see the message? She said, I heard it. And I was rejoicing with you guys. And when she told me, I didn't know it was going to be so soon. Mm-hmm. Because I sit on the sofa and I begin to weep. Because I had, I was losing a mentor. I saw the woman that she was. The woman of great faith stood as a woman of God. Didn't waver. She didn't complain. That was a woman that I could tell her my life for. I didn't mean to cry. But this was a celebration. And she lived her life well. Yes. Because she stood on that foundation of God. Yes. She had her anchor in the promise of God. Mm-hmm. Pray for me and continue to pray for the family. Help us to live up to this word of God, which asks us to stand and show the example of what we are supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Help us to be that light to someone in a dark world. Yes, Lord. Help us to be pleasing in God's sight. Because my sister Olivia. She had that great example of a woman of faith and endurance and courage. Mm-hmm. She stood until she couldn't stand no more. Yes. And God called her and she said, He took her back. Thank you, Sister Tyler. Now we have Joyce. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Olivia was my first cousin. My mother and her mother were sisters. And some people say, when I look at you, I see her mother. Um. I have a song on my heart. I'm just going to sing one verse of it. I believe that while Olivia was going through all of this, she had a song in her heart, and she was getting herself ready to leave us. I didn't know she was going to leave us so soon. I thought I had more time to talk with her, and she just slipped right on away. What God has for me, it is for me. What God has for me, it is for me. I know beyond a doubt. That he will be the what God has for me, it is for me. She was prepared. She loved the Lord. She loved serving the Lord. And she loved children. 
she taught them and she had a love for teaching them the word of God. She was a wonderful mother, a wonderful grandmother, a wonderful cousin, and we thank God for her life. And I'm sure that her students will never forget her. I, I know she would be proud if they pointed her out that was my teacher. Mm -hmm. She would know that she has done what the Lord has asked you to, to go mm -hmm. and teach and lead others to Christ. Mm -hmm. So many people have said things that I was going to say about my cousin. <laughs> you know, you let other folks go ahead of you and they say the very thing that you had written down on your piece of paper. But I knew that she enjoyed life. She spent a lot of time in church, but she still enjoyed life. She would call me, there's a festival going on down in Detroit, you want to go? <laughs> Or, um, it's such a nice day, uh, uh, Josh and I are going to the park, you want to go? Mm -hmm. In the wintertime, I'm not too keen on getting out in the wintertime to go see events, but she would like to go see uh, the places where they'd be carving the ice into statues and whatnot. <laughs> she would like to go and do, that, that wasn't mine. <laughs> but she wanted to do those things. If it was a parade, she would either watch it or help to make the floats to be in it, march in it. She had energy. She had energy. A beautiful person. What should we take from her life? What should we take from her life? Value family. Worship God. Teach his word. Be an example. And he will pay you in the end. He will do it. I'm, I'm not crying now. I felt cheated that she left so soon. I wasn't expecting this. Back in August, I had hip surgery, and she was asking me, can she come over and do something for me? And I was saying, you've got your hands full, you know. I'm going to come over. I'm, I'm not just going to uh, sit. I'm going to do something for you. Then we had a talk in the fall. I'm going to have a procedure in December. And then I got that phone call saying that she was sick, sick really sick. And then I got that early morning call to say that my cousin is gone. Farewell, my dear cousin. I got so many memories. Mm -hmm. I got so many pictures. I, I, I will smile and I will look at your children and I will look at your grandchildren and I know that they are blessed. I'm so glad they all had time to spend with you. Thank you. Sister and brother, Olivia Clarissa Parnell and John Parnell. Amen. My, my nephew asked me if I was going to talk, and I was like, I'm not really doing I talk with kids, but I ain't never had an audience with adults. So I'm going to do my best. My sister and I, <laughs> we went through the good and the bad, so I tried my best to do what I could to help her. Because um, she's taking care of Jocelyn. Jocelyn and my father both lost the ability to stand at the same time, 2012. And my sister went into overload. And she was going to figure out a way to make sure Jocelyn was able mm -hmm. to do what Jocelyn wanted to do. Mm -hmm. was, I mean, she went, and as Joyce said, she loved to go out in events. And I'm 
just last last year. She said, uh, I'm taking Jocelyn to the zoo. Need your help. Now, my sister wasn't walking too well. That trip to the zoo was a trip to the zoo. <laughs> 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 I don't know if O'Leary was pushing the stroller or if the stroller was holding her. I mean, the, the wheelchair was holding her up, but we did it. And I'm like, she did her research because she said there's a, there's a carousel. Jocelyn can get on it. I'm like, what do you mean? They got a handicapped carousel. They took the seat out. I'm like, okay, she didn't have everything planned. But she lived to make sure Jocelyn wasn't just somebody who sat in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. She was determined to make sure that her daughter was happy. Amen. Up until the last day she left here, like even before she passed away, I'm like, she could barely walk. I'm like, Olivia, I could take you. I got it. <laughs> All right. Okay. And let me know when you don't. Now I'm right here. And she, I was going by her house every day after work. When she got sicker and she said, you don't have to come over here, you can just call me. I said, and what happened when you don't answer the phone? I said, I'm coming back. If you don't need me, I'll go home. But I'm going to stop by here every day after work. So um, it, it hurt me a little bit, but I was ready. Because I knew my sister was doing what she wanted to do. It would make her happy. Mm -hmm. But growing up with her... We, we're a crazy family. We got our issues. Yeah. Sometimes you learn the hard way. I remember once I went to the movies with my sister. Didn't do that more than once. Because not only did she talk to the movie, but she reacted. <laughs> like this. She get into the movie, all of a sudden she hit me on the leg and asked me what's happening. I'm like, oh, really? just watch the movie. <laughs> Uh, you're going to read it. You're going to figure it out if you watch the movie. <laughs> but we were family. That's the way Mom raised us. Mm -hmm. She kept us together. Yes. And I was there for her. You know, all her kids who went on their own separate ways. So basically it was me, Olivia, and Jocelyn. Mm -hmm. So we did it. And mm -hmm. I'm thankful my sister, when I looked at her after she passed away, I'm like, finally I'm seeing she was peace, mm -hmm. and she was happy, and she felt, I guess she felt comfortable enough to know that Jocelyn would be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, whatever you need me to do for Jocelyn, I will do it. Because she wasn't sure how to handle things, but I said, I got you. I'm going to be there, no matter what. So now, I guess now, I got three other Four other kids now. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I got it. I'm, I'm here. I'm okay. <laughs> love my sister, and I'm just so happy to see so many other people love her too. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 All right, so I'm the, I'm the youngest brother. So um, I didn't spend a lot of time with Olivia because I was. The, you know, she was like nine years older than me, so. Um, but I can remember back the the earliest remember I have of me and Olivia's, um, and I don't understand the occasion, but the four of us, me, my sister, my brother Dennis, and Claire, we we walked from Powers to a church, First Missionary Baptist Church, and that was like four or five blocks that we walked. And I remember the occasion, because it was in the winter, and I, again, I don't know why we were walking, but I, I assume my mom had enough trust in Olivia to get us all to church on time in the winter walking. And that's the only, that's the only member, memory I have of us walking to church. And I know we had a vehicle, but for that occasion, we walked to church in the winter, and Olivia was leading the way. Um, she was a uh, quick, quick witted. I'll put it that way. She was quick witted. You couldn't get much past her. I remember um, one time um, I asked her if she if she had any problems with sores in the corners of her head, and her response was quick, and she said, "No, because I don't have a square head." 
again, you couldn't get anything past her. Uh, she was, was quick with it. Um, I can remember Olivia, no matter what I was doing or what I was planning, she always asked me, have you done the research? Or, or she would tell you, you need to do the research on that before, if it was a car or a job or um, some kind of pursuit, she would tell you, you need to do the research before you do that. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, she, she did research stuff like she was a scientist because she wanted to make sure how to do it and if you would be successful in doing that, because that was Olivia. And she was a, a real hands-on pers person. I remember um, one time when I was older, she she had an old rust-colored Impala. I can't remember the year, but it was in the 70s. Yes. And uh, the radiator had started leaking. And she wanted to replace the radiator. So she asked me for help, so I went and picked up a radiator and brought it over. And we worked on putting that radiator in her car together because, again, she was a hands-on person. And um, so I, I moved away early. Um, so again, we didn't have any interactions together, but when we did re interact together, it was it was sweet. It was a sweet time. And uh, me and Olivia are, are kind of artistic, so when there was any projects when I was in town, she pulled me in to help out with those art projects, and I was happy to do it. And she would put her creative twist on everything. I always wondered how she got through things. And I always, I knew what kind of struggle she was going through, so I would always pray for her to, to get through it. And I asked her, you know, sometimes, you know, how did you get through this stuff? You know, how, how, how could you manage? And she just said, well, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. That was her saying. It is what it is. And, and, and I'm going to make it. And when you asked if she was okay, she said, I'm all right. You know, she, she, I never saw her not smiling. Uh, she always managed to make it through whatever God threw at her. And she made it through with a smile. So I know she's up in heaven smiling now because she's uh, getting a well-deserved rest. Worship the song from Miss Angela Davis. Amen. And Andrea Davis. Amen. I mean, okay. <laughs>
My mom dad loved her to death. I mean, and it wasn't nothing that Olivia wouldn't do for you. And just the same all the time. Have you ever met anybody just the same all the time? Just the gentle and kind and just pleasant. What an astonishing woman. Can we give her a hand? Hallelujah. Man. Oh, my goodness. And you see it through the children. I must agree. Just some yeah. smart children. I mean, I came from a smart family, but she just made that family and them together made some beautiful, smart children. I just love it. And we're just going to, we're just going to love you.
clap your hands. We know how to sing. Amen. We've been doing it for a long time. And my father say, down through the years, we always hit a home run. Every time. Amen. When your brother George and Carl Davis, amen. They were singers. Amen. I just saw them on TV singing at the palace a couple weeks ago. <laughs> amen. Amen. National. Amen. At this time, we have reflections also coming. Uh, everybody, come on. We have the Reverend Ira Joe Johnson Sr. coming up first. Amen. 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 Give him a hand. Georgia. Give it out to God, the maker of heaven and earth, and the creator of all heavenly things. And who's standing to me behind the day? The international day. I, I saw that in the court in the and and I told him the days of my cousin, he said, the days? They put me on the map. He said, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the days. They fed me when I was hungry. Daddy, I'm talking about it. And I told you on TV and it mattered. Oh, Daddy, I'm talking about it. 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 Daddy, I'm talking when I must stand before my judge, I have to call him This is that awful day. This is the day when we must be in farewell to my sister. I stand here today to say farewell. And well done. My sister Olivia. We'll be partnering. The way from my brother, from a George. I tell you, from a little George, you can say, Well done, Sister Olivia. Well done. With all the joy you do from brothers and sisters, please say, George Johnson. Everybody can to George Johnson, please say. We can stand up. I think I've got brothers in the right and the brothers in the left. I want, I want, I want, I want some backup. So what you don't know is George Johnson, like the prince on coming to America, came to Georgia to find his queen. He came here to find her. This George Johnson came in 1969, 50 years ago, to find his queen. Well done. Well done. And that was a love story. Let me know in Judea. From the family to get well done. Or let him live a whole life with a maid of mine. She had a maid of mine when she married my brother. When I, when I called her a few weeks ago, I told her to come to Atlanta. We, we, we got some good doctors down here. We can solve any problem. Come to Atlanta. He said, I was here, I'm all right. I'm good with God. I'm at peace. I'm living in a maid of God. Serving of God. Well done. That's been a long time. The battle fought. The victory won. Isn't that necessary? The boy said, let me know. Or let him climb up the hill and have a piece of pain to tell the top of the hill. Well done! Well done, that good and safe place. He made him go, fuck a call and leave you home. He said, Pray to come and die. Mars to the hell of a life. I won't give him my best. I love you, love your best. Come on! For well, every day will be Sunday. Seven has no end. Come on. Martha up there with James and John. Come on. 
Ma showed up there with Mother Parnell and Mother Pauletta Johnson. Come home. Yeah. Well, you're going to see you working hard at Johnson. Well, every day would be Sunday. Sabbath had no end. Yeah. Come home. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Bless you. Joy Johnson. Never say joy. God is a God of order, right? Amen. Amen. And my mom is a, is a was a woman of order. She just so powerful. Oh, my mom Olivia. Okay, this is what I have to say. Have y'all just enjoyed yourself today? Amen. Have y'all been lifted? Have y'all been blessed? I think that's what she wanted us to do. Yes. I think she wanted to live on and just continue on and to, to be great and to do right and to live life and to connect the dots. And so, um, I'm going to start with a tribute for my sister, Jocelyn. She's not here today, but she's with us in spirit. She's at the house. And my mom heard so close. Um, she wakes up this morning, y'all, talking, like, moving her mom. I'm like, Jocelyn, what's going on? What you want me to say? Hmm. This is a powerful. See, her and my mom went to Michigan State University. They're Spartans, right? So he goes, Jocelyn, like, don't leave me out today. So let me, I wrote her, like, a little poem because I know she does poetry. So this is from my sister, A Mother's Love, from Jocelyn Monique Johnson. A mother is one who loves you to the end. A mother is one who sticks with you to the end. A mother is one who becomes your friend. A mother's love is enriched with care, always reminding you that God's love is there. Love, Jocelyn. Amen. God just moved so much. When my mom shared this information with me on, I don't know how the guy did it. You know, we talked. The first half of her life, my life, I was like, look, does my mom even talk? My mom's so quiet. I mean, come on, y'all know her, right? Can I get an amen? <laughs> so the first part of my life, she's so quiet, so reserved, but I'm raised with this dad who talks so much, so much. And so I'm kind of like him, like him, right? So check this out. When I get older, before I got married, I said, my, the next part of my life, the next half, or whatever, I want you to be a part of my life the rest of my life. Because I really didn't know she could talk like that, I'm telling you. That's about, about age 12. And so, man, me and her just became very close. I'm like in Texas, and we're talking about almost everything. So our relationship shifted from mother to friend. And sometimes, uh, see, I had a friend tell me, sometimes that relationship will shift. We was talking about everything. So I get in the situation, got all these degrees, and I'm up here in Texas serving as a direct care staff. And I'm like, how did this happen, Lord? Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> so I'm calling my mom, talking to her, and then we just humbling ourselves. She's a very humble lady. So time went by. And then I'm like, okay, maybe I'm going to see for Jocelyn or whatever. But my mom and I would talk about it every day, about what's this and that. And then I said, let me just learn this information. And I said, you just don't know. But now I know. Before Mother's Day, I know what to get her because I never knew what to get her for Christmas, birthdays, nothing. She never wanted nothing. Not even house shoes, y'all. <laughs> but now I know. She wanted the gift of care. You know, like the gift of care? Like you can't go to Walmart and buy that. You know what I'm saying? And like just that to me is priceless. So I'm just here as long as it takes, you know? Yeah. You know how long as it takes. <laughs> so my mom very detailed and um somebody tiny. 
<laughs> Thank you, Jason. <laughs> my brother is not only, God is not only God of order, but my brothers are men of order. Yeah. And so, on the last day, my mom was on her. Um, I'm there, like, probably a week prior. I can't really, the days are blurred. But she calls us all together. Come here, y'all. We're going to talk. She gives us this information. I'm like, what? Let me record this. This is too deep. Let me put this on her because she's a like, Camille. I don't really like you to record me on the I'm like, my, it's too much. I'm like, whoa. This, is, this mom took a detail of our lives and just how God allowed the blessings to show up for her through her kids. Just everything just so planned out. So when she was passing away, she called me to her room. Come here, I want you to come and turn me to my side. I'm like, okay. Turn me to my side. I'm, like, I'm joking with her because my brother says she's a joke or whatever. And I said, don't fall off the bed now. You know, that, don't fall off. But she passes away in my arms. I'm like, what? Who does this? Who passes the baton on to somebody else? Because, you know, that's to me how she left in peace. Yeah. And my auntie said, Auntie Claire said she didn't die alone. She didn't go alone. Mm -hmm. And so it's just the process and everything, you all. I'm telling you, all I can hear is in lieu of Mother's Day, pre-Mother's Day, right, mm -hmm. Sunday, that God chose our family to be a blessing to others. Like, that's who we are. That's what we do. And so this song came to me, um, and it's called, um, oh, so much. Love them while you have them. Love them while you can. All right, I can hear my mom say, I will love them while you have them, and I will love them while I can. All right, John, to come stand with me. This our, our other, we got a brother by default. <laughs> come on, let's do this. <laughs> love them while you have them. Love them while you can. This is what our mothers are. Love them while you can have them. Love them while you can. Oh, 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 oh. I can hear my mom saying, I will love them while I have them. About Jason. I'll love them while I can. I love George while I have him. I love him while I can. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, Jonathan. Love the world on heaven. Love them while I can. I love them while I have them, and I love them while I can. I love them while I have them. I love them while I can. I love them while I have them, and I love them while I can. Amen. My God, okay, I love you. My, everybody's just showing up. I love y'all. That song is written by myself. Jonathan can take it all over the world. But I love y'all. Yeah. Love you too, Camille. Amen. Yeah. So, so proud of you. Amen. Thank you. This time we have the Reverend Russell Reed. Amen. 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 Another brother. That's definitely Olivia's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you heard what you said, that everybody just said. Y'all got to catch Olivia was like that. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. Oh, he's yeah. for the mic. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Oh, okay. I said that uh, that's definitely Olivia's daughter. I said, she said, uh, everybody's just showing, showing up. So y'all got to catch certain. Olivia was like that. Olivia, I've known Olivia basically, well, basically all of my life, and um, you know, uh, sometimes when things have happen and it's a surprise, uh, I don't care how spiritual you are, you, you are, or how grounded you are. Sometimes there's some people that are just so close to you, you it just it it affects you. But it's one thing I do know, is I do know where her hope was, mm -hmm. that she was always the same from 
all all the times that I have known her, um, she was a beautiful person, mm -hmm. strong person. But George had to get permission from me though to talk to her because <laughs> <laughs> we were real real close, and um, and and it, it just was. He's made such a great selection. When you look at her life, yes. and you look at what she accomplished, not just recently, but all of her life, and what she did when with George. George was definitely a special person. Mm -hmm. George was a genius, and Olivia was a gen genius. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't recognize those things, but they both were geniuses. Mm -hmm. And then the mix, their children have that genius gene. Mm -hmm. But they put that God fearing, the love of God, the want to do better. Yes. You know, so it, when you look at the children and the grandchildren, mm -hmm. the family, the Johnson family, the Carswell family, the Parnell family, all the families that's connected. It's amazing that we're here today, yes. but we don't have a sad, a sad song to sing or a sad story to tell you. I know where my sister is. Yes. Well, yes. She's absent from the body, but she's present with the Lord. Y'all yes. continue to pray for us. Family, be encouraged, be strong, for these are truly pearly times, and these are just the beginning of sorrows. We're going to see many things happen. And, but you know where your faith is at, so keep your faith in God. Yes. Stay grounded in God. Yes. And if you stay grounded in, in God, no earthquake, no tornado, no hurricane, no typhoon, no cyclone. Cyclone can remove you from your hope. Yes. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Reed. Close, close family. Now we have the son. I don't need a program today. George Jr. 007. Amen. Reverend Jason Johnson. Columbus, Ohio. First of all, I want to thank God for my mom. Um, she was a beautiful person. Um, she was my first teacher, my math teacher. My English teacher taught me how to write. Um, so when when I go and fill out paperwork, he was like, "Oh, you have such good penmanship." I'm like, "Thank my mom," because <laughs> she would make me write letters and words just like over and over and over and over again. Um, and not only was she a great teacher, she taught me how to teach. Um, my mom could do anything. Uh, she was an inventor. She could build anything. My mom, she had tools before there were any uh, women's caves or you know before the pink the pink hammers and, and and all that stuff came up. My mom, she had this toolbox, and you could go in this toolbox and you could find every tool, and it was organized. Uh -huh. And she's like, "Oh, just go in there and look on the second shelf." And it'll be right there. And that right there taught me as a child that if you put everything where it's supposed to go, mm -hmm. you'll always be able to find it when you need it. Mm -hmm. right. My mom lived that. She was an example. She taught that to us. Um, she's going to be missed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was my friend. Yeah. Talked to her a lot. Yeah. Um, she was always there. For me, when I needed her, my sister she jokes and says that mom only does stuff for you when you tell her to do it. I'm like, well, me and mom we got a different relationship, you know. Like, mom always treated me as the oldest. I'm the second born, but she always treated me as I was the oldest. My sister she finally accepted it, <laughs> but uh. Mom would do anything that I asked her to do. 
is because she knew that I would do anything that she told me to do. <laughs> so it was easy for her to do something when I asked her to do it because I followed everything. I followed her lead. And gonna miss you, Mama. Yes. I love you. Thank you for everything. Yeah. So I'm looking at my watch <laughs> because mom was very clear that she did not want a long service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she would be so proud that it's 1.16 and we're going to be done at one thirty. I'm telling you, she is so happy right now um, because she was a timely person. Right. On time was late. <laughs> Late was bad. You know, she was on time. And so I'm just, I'm thankful that we are here, that everything has been done decently and in order. I'm so glad that we have worked together as a family to organize this celebration today. And the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. And the reflections that I have are, are centered on Psalm 34 and 1, which says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And the first five words of this popular declaration articulate three principles every believer should consider. Aspiration, I will. Action, bless. And then direction, the Lord. Now, I don't have an issue with these first five words because I know that when I bless the Lord, there is an exchange that takes place wherein my soul is blessed as a result of blessing him. I'm good with the first five words, but the next three words, at all times, <laughs> cause me to question my ability to fully meet this expectation. Can I really bless the Lord at all times? I know I can bless him in good times. But when I bless him in rough times, I know I can bless him during church times. But when I bless him during private times, I know I can bless him during times of healing. But when I bless him during times of sickness, well, the scripture says, at all times. And I don't see any wiggle room in that. As a matter of fact, the B portion of that verse drives the point home even further. It says, in case you were wondering what it means to bless the Lord at all times, it means that praise shall continually be in my mind. That means without a break. No stopping, no no ceasing, no pauses. And as I reflected on the life of my mother, I started to understand why this was one of her favorite Bible verses. For you see, she didn't have a problem with the at all times. She didn't have a problem with the continually. Because she was fully committed, completely sold out and totally dedicated yeah. to blessing the Lord with everything that she had. Yeah, First of all, she blessed the Lord with her learning. Oh, yeah. Everybody say learning. learning. My mom was a perpetual learner. Yeah. She thrived off of adding to her knowledge, wisdom, and skills that would add value to the kingdom of God. I recall when I was a child, my mother participated in an annual event at Pentecostal that celebrated various countries from around the world. Mm -hmm. Each participant had to decorate a table, have a display, and prepare a dish that was native to that country. Yeah, yeah. And one year, my mother got Nigeria as her country. <laughs> Fortunately, we had a cousin, Joyce, who spent many years in Nigeria and taught her how to prepare a native dish called jollof rice. 
My mother learned how to prepare jollof rice for this church function, and everyone enjoyed it. She got so much pride out of learning how to prepare jollof rice that we ate jollof rice every night <laughs> for what felt like the next 12 months, <laughs> including holidays and birthdays. <laughs> And I could hear Camilla asking, Mom, is there something else that they eat in Nigeria? <laughs> no, only jollof rice. <laughs> now eat it and be blessed. <laughs> <laughs> she blessed the Lord with her learning. And she blessed the Lord with her leading. Everybody say leading. In my world, Olivia Johnson was the kind of leader who knew all the answers or could figure them out. But you had to ask her to get that wisdom. You had to seek her wise counsel. She was not a bully leader. Her leadership was by invitation and collaboration. She was a leader in thought and action. She believed in order and functionality. If it didn't exist, she designed it and built it. If it didn't work, she studied and fixed it. If it was beyond repair, then she throw it out. Now, my father was also an inventor and very creative. And his timeline for projects to be completed was a little different from my mother. <laughs> Her deadlines for projects always lined up with trash day. <laughs> My dad's schedule was more on a seasonal cycle. I got all summer to build that shade. <laughs> so, so if you wanted to see fireworks after Fourth of July, stop by 4310 Walnut on trash day. I can hear that now. Olivia! Olivia! Did you throw away those tires? <laughs> I was going to give those to Uncle Bull. <laughs> you hear my mom say, Bull didn't want them old tires. That's Chuck, sonny. <laughs> she was the leader. <laughs> and then she blessed the Lord with her living. Everybody say living. Yes. She lived a humble, independent, honest life. Yes. She didn't ask for much but she knew how to have fun. Yeah, yeah. And that's why at the repast today, we're gonna to have a craft table because she wanted folks to make yeah, stuff. Yeah. She made these I mean, just Easter. She sent us a homemade Easter card <laughs> to our house that she made with her hands. And so, you know, come to the repast and, and, and make a card, not to honor her only, but maybe to honor your mother or the mothers in your life yeah. because she blessed the Lord with her living. And she even blessed the Lord in her leaving. Everybody say leaving. In her leaving, she blessed the Lord because she did it according to her terms between her and God. And it reminds me of the last stanza of this poem called Thanatopsis by American romanticist William Cullen Bryant. And he said, so live that when thy summons comes to join the innumerable caravan, which moves to that mysterious realm, thou go not like a query slave at night scourged to his dungeon, but sustained and soothed by an unfaltering trust, approach thy grave like one who wraps the drapery of his couch about him and lies down to pleasant dreams. And that's what she did. Mm -hmm. Camilla came in the room, turned her over, and the next time she opened her eyes, she was in glory. Oh, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Now, now, what's another name for the Lord? What's his name? Jesus. So can we say, oh, magnify Jesus? O-M-J? Oh, 
Oh, magnify Jesus. Oh, MJ. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name yeah. together. Let's give the Lord a hand up and praise. Because he is worthy. Yes, he is worthy. He is worthy. Yes. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Thank you, Commander. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Wayne. Amen. Sister Jocelyn here in spirit right now. Mother of great lady. I'm so glad that. She was in our family. Yeah. Amen. 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 Time is going to do a closing prayer. Uh, let's keep our minds on this occasion. Keep our minds stayed on Jesus. Amen. The author and finisher of our faith. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. A great leader. Amen. Oh, gracious God, thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this occasion. Thank you, Lord, to, 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 to let, for letting us be able to celebrate the life of Sister yeah. Johnson today. Yes, Lord, we thank you for her sharing her life with us. Lord, we know that you are all-powerful, almighty. You don't make no mistakes. We're going to give you praise at all times. You worthy to be praised. You came from 42 generations to show the world how to live. You showed the way. And you made a way. And we appreciate you, Lord, for all you have done for us. So right now, Lord, touch this family. Put your loving arms all around them, Father. Hold them tight, Father. Let them be able to uh, be together and stay together. Everyone, every one of the children, the grandchildren, yeah. touch them right now. Yeah. And leave all family members and friends and all that's connected with this family, uh, continue to check on them. Yeah. Continue to show love towards them and pour love on them during these times. We know there's no failure in you, Lord. And we know that after from the body, that means you're present with the Lord. And that means you can't be in two places at one time. But, Lord, we know that you are good. And thank you, Lord, for opening the door and let her be able to be in your kingdom. We need you, Lord. Every second, every minute, every hour, we need you, Lord. So I give all the praise and honor to your God. The word is only worthy. Your mercy and your grace have kept us down through the years. So we thank you right now. God bless you. Amen. 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 So we should call the directors in. We want to commit to the committal. Commit the body right now. Her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes and ashes. 
I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, said the Spirit, that they may rest their labors from their labors and their works to do follow them. Amen. 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 It's a recreation complex, a complex, an Amen. We would like to thank the minister for leading um, us in the services as well. And anyone that made a question, thank you for those. Um, the ones that sung and gave um, musical selections, thank you for those. Um, as we age the chapel, people are asking that you keep your family in your prayers um, and give them a call, give them a shout out. You know, whenever they cross your prayers, give them a Amen. Um, in your prayers, and then travel here in park. Um, as a final tribute um, on behalf of Cousin Sam and Carol, we'd like to read these words that might change us, but love lasts forever. Amen. Amen. And we could just all stand and we will follow um, the minister's house and family out. Amen. Amen.